This episode of Sass or Something is brought to you by Audible. Thank you, Valve. I needed like one more announcement that I don't uh, fully, fully grasp or understand. Granted, yes, it is a three-pronged announcement uh, because, you know, it's not like there's consoles coming out or other things happening in the industry. But thank you, Valve, for keeping things very interesting. Uh, SteamOS. Uh, what is it? Well, in terms of their description of it, you can go find that for yourself there on the Steam site. But uh, yes, they have an operating system that is designed for games. Uh, that's really kind of the, the, the crux of it. And whether or not this is going to go on to a new piece of hardware, which I think is very likely, a licensed piece of hardware, probably, probably coming from several manufacturers, and then a third prong, which I'll get to later on in this Cecil or something. Um, but I, I think I honestly don't know how to feel. Um, I understand that there are issues with Windows. I know that Valve and Gabe Newell personally has a lot of issues with Windows 8, and this is an interesting way to try to subvert the dominance of uh, that operating system for Steam and for games, uh, but I don't know exactly where the end game is supposed to be. Is this supposed to be competing against uh, Microsoft and Sony? If so, this is a very strange way to go about announcing it. Um, operating systems can be interesting, but uh, announcing an operating system isn't really as sexy as, say, announcing a console or announcing a new game. And uh, their decision to be this kind of strange and removed, drop everything out, you know, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, it is like Valve's always find a unique way about going about things. But when the crux of this operating Operating system is in, in improved performance without needing incredibly strong hardware. Um, that's something that is best demonstrated. Uh, and right now, we're having to sort of take their word on it. And uh, actually, the other a, a huge thing we're having to take our word on is that uh, there's a lot of AAA publishers in games that are already on board with this. Uh, that's going to be essential to make this venture work. And to say that they are on board, but not be able to identify any of them, and nothing in their statement today indicated that they would be identifying it throughout the week. Um, it feels, I don't want to say half-baked, but it feels uh, a little underwhelming and it's uncertain where the excitement is supposed to be occurring. Uh, yeah, we're probably going to hear about a physical product uh, and whether or not that's going to go over all that well is yet to be seen. Um, I imagine that from previous statements that have come from Valve that they will be licensing this OS so people can manufacture various boxes. There might be multiple tiers at multiple costs. This could be very confusing for a lot of consumers. I think for me and for you guys out there, we kind of have our head wrapped around it. We'll know if we want to get this or not. But that's not the easiest way to inspire uh, interest and excitement in the much broader market. And uh, you know, the, the, Valve isn't exactly uh, a marketing juggernaut. They just have such loyalty that that's how they can sell so many of their products. But once you get to a physical object, well, that's an entirely different world. And uh, whether or not they can really stimulate a lot of sales and excitement outside of the core base is yet to be seen. But this is a novel path to go about doing it. Now, uh, I, I think the, the thing that's on everyone's mind, Half-Life 3. It's on my mind. It's on your mind. I sleep about it. I dream about it. Um, to make this work, that prong, if there is Half-Life 3, and that's part of the uh, sort of the, the both the reveal and the launch of the OS and the Steam Box or whatever it is, that starts to make a lot of sense. Uh, they have uh, you know teased people's imagination with whether or not they're working on the game. They started to you know tease with what this announcement is supposed to be. If Half-Life 3 is not the final prong, I think this might be a little bit head-scratching. They can't identify the AAA games that are already working or being developed to work on the Steam OS. Uh, I think there needs to be that product, that thing that says, I want that. It really is Half-Life 3. Oh my god, it'd be awesome. It also had Left 4 Dead 3. Portal 3, you know, Team Fortress 3. Uh, you know, that would definitely start to make the case that they are as heavily invested with their original development on this platform as apparently all of these other AAA games are. Uh, this is all yet to be seen. It's been a very, very interesting day. Um, how this all pans out, if it is successful, the, the impact could be modest. Uh, or it could be great. Uh, I, I honestly don't know what to think about this now. Uh, that core community is obviously very excited and Valve seems to never do wrong. Uh, but this might be one of the most ambitious ventures and one that carries the greatest risk. All right, everyone, it's time to acknowledge our sponsor, Audible.com. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. 
Audible has over 100,000 titles to choose from to be downloaded to your iPod, MP3 player, and playback anywhere, anytime. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash something to get a free audiobook download of your choice. And this week I'm recommending, last week's recommendation is Gary Steingart's Super Sad True Love Story. I just love the book all that much. Again, go to audiblepodcast.com slash something for your free audiobook. All right, uh, so the other thing I wanted to bring up today is uh, there's, there's so many words that are thrown around the internet, and a big popular one last week was censorship. Um, I'm not aware of any censorship that seems to be going on. Uh, look, Grand Theft Auto V came out. That game was already hell-bent on causing some controversy. It got very, very good reviews across the board. Some people liked it a little more than others. Some people had impressions that the game may have been misogynistic. I actually don't see it that way. We really, as a community, need to allow for the fact that there can be differences of opinion and that a distinct opinion, a different opinion, doesn't mean that A, something shouldn't exist or that something should be changed. I know I've gotten a lot of grief about things like that and I feel very bad for some of the people, especially some of the female writers out there, who really were abused in in, 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 in an almost awe-inspiring way in terms of the toxicity of the comic because someone decided to take exception to something in the game. All someone can do when they're reviewing a game is be honest in their impression of it. If the job of the reviewer is to satisfy the expectation of the reader, then uh, that really doesn't serve any purpose whatsoever. It's pretty much just masturbatory. So really, when you look at the toxicity of those comments and then everyone wonders why no one regards games as art, uh, this is where so many of those problems come from, is this irrational eruptions that happen so frequently. Uh, you know, it's so funny that it happened the same week that the Pope made an absolutely phenomenal announcement in his interview with the Jesuit magazine where he recognized that there were certain ways that the church was being represented and he said he didn't change what their values were, just wanted to change how they presented themselves and articulated themselves. I, as someone who is deeply secular, which is me, I was very intrigued and have not been able to stop reading up on this. As a gaming community, there might be a lot to learn. All right, everybody, uh, a couple of things I wanna say. A, I fully agree with the fact that probably by Friday, uh, this video, I'll look like a complete jackass. More importantly, we're trying out something experimental. Um, we're gonna have a special edition of Sess or something. We have about four episodes going up in the next month and a new show, four episodes of it. It's called Bringing Up Nick, where uh, Nick Robinson, who uh, you might know from Address to Sess, he is one of the younger people that I've ever worked with. And it turns out there's a lot of movies uh, he hasn't seen that I think are important culturally. And so uh, I assigned him to go watch the movie and we have a discussion about it. What's unique about this is we are only putting these up on Revision 3's site. It will not be up on YouTube. It will not be up on some of our other partners out there. And this is to try to do an experiment. It really is an experiment to see if people will be willing to come watch videos on our site this might inform some decisions that we may make going down the road. I know a lot of people out there are interested if we want to start writing things up, and this is a way to test the waters and see what the interest is, and that's why they are uniquely on our site. It will be at revision3.com slash games, and the newest of the Sessler Something Q&A edition will be going up tomorrow, and we'll keep you informed as new content rolls out.